Hello everybody and welcome to this Bigger Plate webinar. My name is Liam Hughes, it's my pleasure to welcome you today to this uh, short, sweet, hopefully, uh, introduction to XMind webinar where I'm just going to give you a really brief uh, overview of, of the XMind uh, product, what you can do with it uh, and uh, show you some of the example maps that you can find on, on biggerplate.com. Um, I can see we've got a few people joined the call already, so you are most welcome. Uh, it's great for me to know who you are and where you're joining from today. Always nice to know uh, who we're speaking to. Uh, so please let me know uh, where you're joining from today and if you have any specific questions you're hoping to have answered, and I will uh, well, do my best to cover them as we go. So what I'm going to do now is just jump straight into this XMind map, which I'm hoping all of you can see okay. So let's come down here. So what we're gonna do is just move around this mind map. I'm gonna start here and welcome. We're then gonna talk about XMind, then gonna show you some examples, and then we're gonna look at conclusions or any questions you may have. So by means of welcome, as I say already, my name is Liam. I'm the founder of biggerplate.com. Uh, we started Bigger Plate back in 2008. So we've been around quite a while and we hope to be around for a, a little time to come yet. Uh, biggerplate.com for those of you who, who maybe are not that familiar with us we are the home of mind mapping and specifically we focus on providing three things for people who are new or, or interested in mind mapping uh, we're known for templates tutorials and training so templates is really about our mind map library you've got thousands of mind map templates and examples that have been created and shared by other mind map users We've then got a very wide range of tutorials growing all the time to try and help people get more from their chosen mind mapping software and then maybe for uh, more for organizations or, or universities, colleges, businesses, uh, we also provide training services, both uh, virtual and uh, in person. So that's what Bigger Plate's known for. Uh, you may or may not be a member of Bigger Plate already. In case you're not, here's just a quick overview of that. So basic membership of Bigger Plate is free, and that's what makes it such a great resource. You can get a lot of stuff from Bigger Plate for free. Uh, and basic membership allows you to download and, and open your own uh, mind maps from our site, but also you can share your own mind maps that you have created with our global community. We've got something like 180,000 members at, at this point in time. So uh, if you're not already, we hope you'll become the 180,000th and one uh, member pretty soon. We also have what we call our pro membership. This is our paid membership for those who want to get a little bit extra from the website. That costs just $29.99 per year, and that's going to give you access to a huge range of webinars. That's primarily what people join for, uh, in addition to more tutorials, special offers, and image library, and a lot more. So uh, please have a, look, have a look at Bigger Plate Pro. If you have any questions about pro or basic membership uh, during this call, please feel free to, to drop them in, and I'll, I'll try and answer those as well. So what about this webinar then? Well, it's a very simple introduction to XMind. We're going to look a little bit at the, the benefits of this particular program. We're going to show you, I'm going to show you some of the, the sort of essential mapping functions, and then we're just going to look at some example mind maps that other people have created and shared on Bigger Plate. And that's going to be a chance for me to just demonstrate how the Bigger Plate site works if you're a basic free member. There is a questions panel here on GoToWebinar, which you can hopefully see. Uh, and it's a great place for you to just put down any questions, but it doesn't have to be a question. It could just be comments or feedback or ideas, but it'd be really useful to, to just know for those of you on the call today, uh, what you have joined hoping to learn today. So what is your experience of XMind? Have you, have you tried it already? Are you thinking of trying it for the first time? So if you just want to test out the questions panel, that'd be really great for me to know. Um, I can see lots of names on the call that I don't recognize, so that's great. You're all very welcome. Um, but if you have any questions or thoughts, right at the beginning that you want to just uh, throw into the questions panel. My question for you really is, what is your interest in XMind today? So if you can use that questions panel and just give me some uh, food for thought, your own perspectives, I'd, I'd find that very, very helpful. And anytime you want to post your questions throughout this session, please feel free to just drop those into the, uh, the questions panel and then I'll be able to wrap them up right at the end of the, the session. So before I move on, what I'm going to do is just switch off this uh, camera so we've got a bit more space to work with here. And we're going to come down here and look at XMind. So XMind is a, a, just a fantastic tool. We absolutely love it here at Bigger Plate. It's very, very popular around the world uh, as a mind mapping software product. So particular strengths we want to talk about with XMind is it's really about sort of simple, easy mind mapping. So this is a great free product. Uh, you can get a free version of XMind Zen for free. Uh, it's perfect, therefore, for people who are maybe newer to mind mapping. Uh, it's great for experimenting with, with mind mapping without 
uh, spending any money. So if you're new to this whole way of working, uh, you ideally want to sort of get used to it and experiment with it first. Uh, and XMind is normally where we direct people to go uh, for those very early stages of their mind mapping experimentation. It's great to be able to experiment without risking any money. So it's a great free product, but that's not the only sort of strength of it. It is a very good product, primarily because it is simple and easy to use. It is easy to start with XMind, very easy to share your maps, and it's got a very simple interface. Some mind mapping products can be a bit overwhelming for people. It may be a few too many menu options. Uh, what XMind, in particular this version of XMind, which is called XMind Zen, is really focused on. You can see this even over here. The menu is very uh, light. It's not cluttered. There's not thousands of things in here. And the whole goal from the team in XMind with this product is to make it really simple and uh, easy for people to start playing around with the tool and not feel overwhelmed with so many options, particularly people who maybe are not so familiar with working with software. Generally, this is not too intimidating as a tool to just start working with. The other thing we love about XMind is it creates really beautiful mind maps. It creates a great looking style of map. It's got a great user interface and a very kind of creative mind map style. It's got a, a nice aesthetic to it. It doesn't look too uh, boring. Uh, you can make it nice and colorful or not so colorful, whatever you want, but it looks professional. It looks uh, high quality. So whether you're working with other people on your mind map or just by yourself, you've got a way of working here that's really going to um, help to make your information more visually interesting, but also keeps it really nice and organized. So that's enough about strengths of the product. What about the basics of the product? What are you going to be able to do with this tool? Well, first and foremost, what we're interested in is map building. And if you've never used mind mapping tools before, XMind, as I say, is a very good place to start. From a blank mind map, you can get started pretty quickly, but I'm just going to start building out really from this map so I don't have to start all over again. But what we're going to be able to do with uh, XMind is build out the basics of our map very, very quickly and easily, just using a couple of keys on our keyboard. So as it says here, adding topics is just as easy as using the insert or tab key. So if I hit insert on my keyboard, it's going to go outwards like this. And as it says here, if I hit enter or the return key, it's going to go down. So what that looks like is I might say insert to go out one and then just type return goes down, return goes down again, insert or tab goes out. And this is not particularly very useful, me just saying out and down. But all I'm saying is with just a couple of keys on your keyboard, insert tab or the enter return key, you can start to build out the structure of your mind map. If you could prefer to, you can also just use these um, menu items up here. So I could just say add a subtopic like that. That's fine, but that's going to become pretty tedious to have to keep going up there every time you want to add a, a topic or a subtopic. But you can see how easy that is. But I, I think uh, typing and just using the keyboard to just type and build out the map is very, very powerful. Once you've started to add topics and things into your mind map, you'll start to realize that maybe you want to move things around. Maybe you want something to be above something else or you want to move things around. So moving and reordering information in XMind, really nice and simple, just using your mouse. And I can just left click on a topic like this one here and you'll see what XMind does here. It gives me this little kind of light blue outline and that tells me where I'm going to land if I let go of my mouse. So if I let go of the mouse, you'll see that's now been moved to this other branch. And similarly, I can just pick it up again and move it down there. Now this is a really simple but really powerful part of mind mapping software in general. The ability to move information around is incredibly powerful and there are no better tools for doing that than mind mapping tools. You can move individual topics like I just did there or you can also move more than one topic at once. So if I drag my mouse across two things, across two things, I can then pull them both down there like that and you see it's moved both at once. I can also move a, a, a bigger level topic so I can go further up the tree structure and, and move this one around. So we can move and reorder things very, very easily. And that's important because as you start to build out your maps, you enter and, and, and insert information, you're going to start to want to categorize and recategorize and restructure that information in order to make sense. We want to end up with a really good hierarchy of information because that's what's going to help you get clarity around your ideas. So the ability to move and reorder things in XMind, not only is it very easy, but it looks really um, powerful once you're doing it with other people as well to just be moving around ideas and reordering. 
What about navigation? So you can see in the map here, as I move around this presentation, what I'm just doing quite often is just right clicking on the background of the map, the, the sort of white space, if you like, and that creates this little hand icon that you should be able to see, which means I can just pull the map. So it's almost like I'm just pulling the piece of paper, if you like, around the screen. That's kind of my preferred way to move around my maps, and that's going to be really powerful, particularly when the maps start to get quite big. So I'll quite often just use that, and you'll see in this session that I'll just pull the map around and, and uh and, and get to where I want to in the middle. And then I've also got options to zoom in, and this can be very helpful for zooming in on the details. So I can just use my trackpad on my mouse to do that. Or down in the, the corner here in XMind, I've got zoom options. I can zoom in, zoom out, as you might expect. So nothing too surprising there, but it means what you've got with uh, a mind map is the ability to be right in, focused in on a detail here, zoomed in. But importantly, with mind mapping, you get a real benefit, which is being able to zoom out and see the big picture. That is a huge advantage of mind mapping over other ways of working. The ability to zoom in and zoom out, see both the details and the big picture, but within the same document very easily and switching between those two views is extremely powerful. And it's one of the things that people uh, reference the most when they talk about why they love mind mapping and why they use mind mapping. That macro and micro view is very important and it can be done just by using some very simple zooming functionality. So that's the, the basics, if you like, of XMind. But then we've started to build out our mind map. What we might want to begin doing is using some of the more visual aspects of this way of working. We are, after all, trying to get away from big blocks of text and written documents. We're using mind mapping to simplify our lives and make information a little bit more manageable. Once we do that, we might also want to start using some of the visual functions within XMind to give our information just a few more visual signposts, little references to help us out. So. Firstly, what we can do is we can do a lot of formatting with the topics themselves. So you see, this is a topic, this is a topic, here are my topics. Now, I can do quite a lot with them just uh, as individual topics just by popping open this menu up here, which is, as it says there, the formatting menu. So if I grab a particular topic, what I can do is, is change things here and say I want to change that maybe to, uh, let's say, a kind of circle. And maybe I want to fill that with a particular color. So let's say I'm going to fill that like that. And now to just make my contrast a little bit, I can also make changes to the text. I can change the font. I can make it bold. So you see within one menu here, nicely hidden out of the way. So I can just hide that when I don't want it. But as soon as I want to make any changes to the map or a particular topic, I can just come in here, play around with these options and make this uh, section or this topic of the map look the way I want, however I might want that to look. I can also play with the entire sort of map theme. I can uh, just apply changes to the whole uh, by coming into here. And instead of looking at style, I'm looking at the map options here. And you can see I can change the theme. And if I just click one of these, it's going to apply a change to the whole my map and very quickly puts it into uh, whatever theme I've selected. Now, I preferred my other one, so I'm just going to undo and go backwards. But here's where you've got a lot of options in XMind to just create some really nice different visuals, find the style of, of theme that's most appropriate for, for what your map is for. Maybe if you're going to use it to present to other people, you might want it to look a little bit different to maybe if it's just a mind map for yourself. Again, XMind gives you really nice, easy to use functions here, even simple things like just saying, I want to go with a sort of blue color scheme, and it's going to just change that for me. So again, I'm just going to say undo, go back a sec. So loads of options there with formatting within your mind map. And again, I'm just moving around the map using that zoom and that grab. But formatting is easy. What we've also got in XMind is a really lovely selection of images and icons we can use. So uh, images are, are called sort of, uh, I think, stickers they call them in here yeah that's right so stickers we've got and you can think of this almost a little bit like clip art i guess so images are just quite a nice way as i've done here at the sort of main topics of my map to just add a little bit of visual interest so uh, maybe i just can use these little options here in the uh, the side menu under sticker again really nicely tucked away in the menu here i've got sticker options and i can put in whatever i so choose there the other thing we can do in XMind is use uh, icons, or as they call them here, markers. So let me just change that to say icons and markers. And this is where you might start to use uh, little images, these little markers, to identify uh, maybe a particular status or something about information. So let's say, for example, you have a task to do in your mind map, which is uh, maybe a complete proposal. 
uh, maybe for a particular project. So what we could do is start to use some of these little icons here to indicate the kind of status of that action. So perhaps I've, I'm halfway through that action. And if I just click on that, even in the map here, without even needing this menu open now, once the icon is in there, I can just keep updating it as I make progress until eventually it says complete. What I can also do in x is use maybe some of these other icons to, to give myself other little visual references. So perhaps I'm halfway through this. So if I just click on it, I can reset it to say half. But what I could also perhaps do is use things like these flags. And maybe the red flag in my map is going to show me things that are maybe behind schedule or maybe problem areas. Maybe I'm halfway through this action because it's difficult. That's what this red flag is giving me. So you can start to use the icons. And you see you've got a great selection here in next one to just give yourself little visual signals about the information or the ideas that you've built out in your mind map so we use icons and images a lot in our mind maps just to give ourselves or our, our, our audience little visual references to help us un better understand our information and you'll see we've got just simple topics here but with icons all over the place to help us if we needed it other things we can do in XMind that you may want to try and experiment with. One of the things we could do is show connections between information by adding relationship lines. So uh, what we can do here is uh, suggest there's a, a relationship or a connection between two pieces of information. We can use this relationship option here. And you see I've selected one topic, the relationships one, and then I've got this arrow that I can just draw and connect to any other topic in the map. So let's say I, I want to pop this down here. And it's going to open that up, create this little visual signal for me. And it's just a way in my mind map I can keep a, another sort of visual signal to myself that this item relates to this item. Now, obviously, in this example, it doesn't actually relate. It's just a, to demonstrate. But you've got really simple options here to, again, just add visual signals to yourself to show what information connects with what else. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with these because if you start to add relationships all over the place, as I'm sure you can imagine, that can actually start to get more confusing than helpful. But particularly when a mind map gets quite big, to just draw some of these lines around and just say this relates to this, that can be very helpful. We can also just move the, the line. Maybe if we say actually it's more relevant to have a line going up there, that's what we can do there. We can even label the relationship uh, if we want. Now, this gives us just really simple ways in a mind map to create this visual structure that tells us what we need to pay attention to. And whether we're using little icons or images or these relationship lines, we're hopefully giving ourselves ways to easily interpret the information that we've built out in our X mind maps. So that's relationships. And then finally, what about boundaries? Well, boundaries are just a nice way of kind of grouping things together in, again, in a nice visual way to say this is part of a set that maybe we want to stand out a little bit more. So what we want to do here is just grab a, a topic that has some subtopics. So I'll use the formatting one here. And just up here, I click boundary. And hey, presto, you've got a boundary. Now, again, if I click that and do some formatting, I've got some options here to say I want the the border to be green. Uh, maybe I want to fill it with a certain color. I'll go with something like there. And if I just close that down, you see the boundary is just a way of making certain information or a group of information stand out. Now, when you might want to use that is really down to your own mapping and what subject or topic you are working with. But it's a really simple way of just making, as I say, a group of information really stand out and really make the fact that they are a group of information really more visible to, to anybody, including yourself. So formatting, icons, images, relationships, boundaries, loads of options with XMind, and you'll see from how I've applied these things, all really nice and easy to apply either from this menu up here or by simply selecting a topic and popping open this one of these two side menus. So as I said at the beginning, XMind really worked hard to keep your menus nice and clean, nice and simple, and not overwhelming. So finally, what I want to show you in XMind, really powerful features, again, to just start to capture more information in your mind maps without cluttering up the surface level of your map. So there's two things we can do here, and I'll just swap the order of these. Oops, sorry. Just swap the order of these round just so we can deal with them in the right order. So what I mean by adding extra information, the, a real benefit of using mind maps is we, we just have one or two words at a time in our map. We don't really want to have big, long sentences. Otherwise, the mind map just becomes a bit overwhelming. So what we want to do, however, is if we need extra information in our mind map for recording or, or just noting to ourselves, what we can do is use this notes function here. So 
if I click up here in the notes, what it's going to do is pop open almost like a mini Word document. And as it says here, notes enable me, if I can type correctly, to add lots of extra information beneath the surface. So we kind of call this the second layer information. So if you imagine the surface level of our mind map is what you're seeing here, but now I see this little symbol here, I know that there are some notes attached to that topic. If I click that, it's going to just pop open and I can see that extra information. So I've got another sort of 10 or so words here just beneath the surface, but it's not cluttering up the main surface of my mind map. And that's really going to help me to manage all of the information in my mind map much more easily. Now, I will often use this. I might copy and paste uh, maybe a paragraph of text from a website or a document. I sometimes will copy and paste parts of an email into notes when I'm working in a mind map uh, just so I've got the key information I need right in front of me. And I'll know it's just beneath the surface here and if I click that it's going to pop open uh, the extra information that I want so rather than have all of that information in big long sentences taking up space on the surface of my mind map I'm just hiding it beneath the surface but it's really easily accessible I can go in and uh, go back and edit or add information anytime I want really powerful feature that we recommend you get used to using in x minus and it's really going to help you to keep the surface of your mind maps like this nice and clean just focused on keywords and then the detail and the depth can be in those notes features Another very powerful function in mind mapping software, and again, X1 does this very nicely, is to just add hyperlinks into your, into your map. And these can be hyperlinks to uh, websites or even to files on your computer. And what this allows you to do is create little signposts in your map that says, if you want more information, go here. So this little symbol here is an example. It's XMind way of telling me you've got a hyperlink here. And if I click that, it's just going to pop open the web link that I've saved, which in this case is biggerplate.com. Now, I could very easily, for example, have saved, uh, let's use another example. Maybe let's go bbc.co.uk, for example. And I can take the BBC website. And I could just say, I want to save that as a hyperlink. So what I can do is come up here and say, insert hyperlink. And I want to do a web page. So I can just save that in there, hit return. And now I've got that little symbol, that little icon there telling me you've saved a website here. And again, if I click that, it's going to pop open the website that I've saved. Now, you might use this to capture websites around competitors or as you do research for a particular project, maybe you find websites that are going to help you to complete that project. So saving your hyperlinks in a, web, in a, a mind map is going to mean, again, you've got everything right in one place. Similarly, we can also link to files. So for example, I could say to insert a hyperlink, this time to a file. Uh, it says this feature is locked. That's strange. This feature is not available in trial mode. I'm not sure why XMind thinks I'm in trial mode. That's a bit strange. Uh, so this should be the full mode. So I'm not quite sure why that's not working, but the principle is you should just be able to link off to a file on your computer. And just like this arrow here, it's just gonna save a little link that says, here's the file you need, Liam, and it'll open up for you. So sorry, not able to demonstrate that very easily. Not sure what's going on there, because this is the full version of XMind. Um, but adding that extra information in the software is gonna be a really powerful way of pulling all of your ideas and information into one place, keeping things manageable, making things visual, and then really starting to move forward with whatever it is you need to do. So that's our overview of XMind. What about some example uses of mind mapping software or XMind in this case? So this is where I'm going to just be able to demonstrate to you how big a plate works. So I've saved here a couple of example mind maps for different things. And if I open up those links, again, I can just click this little symbol here. It's going to pop open bigger plate, close some of these other things. Pop open the Bigger Plate website, and here I've saved for myself a project plan mind map that somebody has uploaded to biggerplate.com. So I think to myself, this looks like a useful map. It's been downloaded a couple of hundred times. So what I'm going to say here is I want to download this mind map. Again, just remember I'm signed in here as a basic member, so that's free to do. And as I've downloaded it here, it's just come down into my browser. And if I click that, that should open up that template map in XMind. So here's the map that I've downloaded from biggerplate.com. Well, the first thing that strikes me is it's gone a slightly strange sort of color. So I'm going to come over here into that formatting options and I'm going to change the theme and say, let's make that the colorful theme. 
and hey presto, I've already improved that map. So I just pulled the template down from Bigger Plate, and now I'm going to adapt it to my own needs. So I can start to add the information here. I can start to add the names. I can start to build out the depth of information. And very quickly, we've started to build out a project plan just using a template from biggerplate.com. So other templates you might use, another sort of project management example, opening up here, or sorry, a business plan template. So I could download this. Maybe I've got a, a, an idea for a business that I want to try and start. I can download the business plan template from Bigger Plate for free. It's then going to download that onto my computer, open that up. And once again, that should just open up into XMind. And I've got my business plan structure ready to begin. So once again, I might just say I want to change that theme. I want to make it a little bit more uh, vibrant as I build out my exciting business plan. So I'm just going to change that theme. That could be a bit too vibrant. Who knows? But what I've now got, again, is just a really simple template of information to start building out. So maybe, again, I've got some competitors here. This is where you might use that website linking. So you could say insert a, a hyperlink to a web page. And you might save that competitor website just here. So let's say Bigger Plate is one of your competitors. I've now saved that competitor website right into my business plan. So if I need to build out more information about that, it's right here. I've also got a strengths and weaknesses. So I might start to use some of those icons and say, here's the, the strengths of or maybe the, the good stuff is green, the weaknesses is red. And once again, I would just start to build out my ideas um, of my competitor analysis just in this template map. So all we've done here is just pop open mind maps on biggerplate.com. So I'm back to my presentation. And I've got a whole set of different mind maps here to help me get started. And you could use things whether you're at school, in education. You've got examples here of somebody's created a mind map about uh, Roman history. Once again, I could just say to download that. Pull that into my, my own software on my computer. And I've got a basis to build out my ideas and my information about whatever subject it is. So this one is about the, the Roman Empire. So somebody else has done a lot of the work for me. And I could start to learn what they've put in. Or I could build out my own ideas and build up uh, my understanding of that subject. So I'm not going to show you all of those different examples. But I'm hoping you can just understand how the Bigger Plate site works. I could go to Bigger Plate just like this, and I could look for, uh, maybe let's look for history as a topic, perhaps. I search, and you'll see I've got a whole set of results there that I could download. I can say I only want to see history mind maps in the XMind format. Apply the filter, and now I'm just looking at a set of maps on bigger plate in the XMind format. If I download those, that's going to work really nice and easily with my software. So that's how Bigger Plate works, and hopefully you then see what you could also do with XMind, whether it's in business, education, or just generally perhaps building out your personal plans for the next year ahead. You can do some really great work in XMind using just the most basic functions and features within this tool and get started very quickly and easily uh, using this software. So that's all. I've just always tried to get through this relatively quickly. Uh, so I'm not taking up too much of a day. So what about conclusions and next steps? Well, if you haven't already, make sure you join Bigger Plate. It is a fantastic resource, and you're going to learn how other people around the world are using XMind to uh, help themselves in business, in their studies, at home, whatever it might be. So join Bigger Plate for free. That gets you access to loads of XMind maps, and you can also then, if you want to, share some of your own map creations, and we'd love to see what you are doing. You can also upgrade your account to Bigger Plate Pro. That's cost just $29 a year, and that's going to enable you to really get a lot more from XMind through the webinars, tutorials, uh, software discounts, and uh, a lot of extra functionality there as well. If you would like to, please do connect up with us. We are on Twitter, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. We're in all of those places, so feel free to connect with us there if, if you are using those channels. And please do feel free to email me directly if you'd like to. My email address is on the screen there. It's liam at biggerplate.com. And if you have any questions about XMind, about Bigger Plate, I'll be very, very happy to answer them via email. But in the meantime, if you have any questions here and now that I can answer for you uh, in the webinar, I would be very, very happy to hear your questions, your feedback, uh, your thoughts, and uh, see if I can kind of help any of those issues out uh, right now. So I asked earlier how many of you are sort of experimenting with XMind, and I can see 
uh, a few people have said uh, never tried before trying it because it's free and, and that's great so I'm hoping your experiments are going uh, going well already and you're already starting to use the software and, and get a lot of use out of it um, I can see a question here that says what is the difference between XMind Pro and XMind Zen uh, it's a really good question let me just jump to the XMind website and I'll probably just be able to uh, explain the question a little bit first. So there are uh, two products at XMind, and you can just see in the in the top of their website here, XMind Zen and XMind 8. Now, these are two different products, and XMind 8 is essentially the old product. It's the very, very popular tool. It's been around for over 10 years, and uh, a huge number of people have used this tool, but it's sort of the legacy product. So again, you can get it for free. It's a great free tool, um, or you can upgrade to get extra features. But XMind 8 or XMind Pro is, is is the old software, and therefore it's not where the company is focused anymore. So the XMind Zen, that's the product I've been showing you today. This is again free download, nice and easy to do. But this is the future product for XMind. This is the one that's going to continue to be developed and updated. So um, to answer your question, uh, XMind Eight or XMind Pro, as it has been called in the past, is the old software, the legacy product. It's still available, and I think they're going to continue supporting it for some time, uh, but it's certainly not going to be developed anymore, whereas XMind Zen is the, the new product, and that's really the future of that, um, that product. So I would recommend uh, going and, and, and experimenting with the XMind Zen product, uh, because that's, that's going to have a lot to longer life uh, ahead of it probably than uh, than the XMind, than the other option. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, other questions, can I do collaborate? Uh, so another question here, uh, two questions actually, about um, real-time collaboration. So can the question is, can I collaborate online using XMind? Uh, the answer is no. There was uh, an XMind cloud product a, a little while ago uh, that is, is discontinued now. So uh, if you want real-time collaboration in your mind maps uh, online, you're not going to be able to do that at the moment with XMind. I don't know whether that's coming back in the future. You'd have to contact uh, the XMind company to find out. Uh, but at the moment, to my knowledge, it's not possible to collaborate uh, on your mind maps in real time um, on, online, so uh, not currently possible is the answer there. Uh, other questions? Thank you for your questions and your comments. Uh, questions here, XMind compared to other software. Uh, yes, so we usually get asked this, what, what XMind compared to other software. Um, it's always difficult to, to give a good answer in, in short space of time, like on these webinars, because there are a lot of different software options available. Um, and it kind of depends what matters to you. So uh, it's not to say XMind is better than the others or the others are better than XMind. You should always really be thinking about what matters to you when you're choosing your software. So for example, if you want online collaboration, XMind is not gonna be as strong as some other products. If you want really heavyweight project management functions, again, XMind Zen is probably not gonna be the right tool for you. Uh, and you probably need to look at some others uh, that are out there. Um, you can get information on all of the different software options on biggerplate.com. So please remember, we don't make any software and we don't sell any software. So you can get just some sort of impartial information from our website, some independent uh, perspectives on what software is best for what. Um, but I can't really say XMind is better for this or that. It kind of depends on what you want the software to do. Um, as I said at the beginning, we think the strengths of XMind are the simplicity of the tool. Uh, it's really easy for people to get started, uh, great for people who are new to mind mapping. It's very intuitive, a very simple interface. It's not going to overwhelm people too much. Um, so we think the advantages of XMind are really about that simplicity, great first step into mind mapping, uh, and a very elegant, easy to use, professional looking mind mapping software tool. So um, I can't answer your question too explicitly around XMind versus other software because it will depend what other software are you thinking about. Uh, but if you'd like to email me, uh, liam at biggerplate.com, my, my uh, email is there on the screen. If you want to email me uh, and tell me what your considerations are, maybe which other software you're thinking about, I can probably give you a slightly more um, uh, informed perspective on, on which may be pros and positives and negatives for, for any of the software options you're looking at. Uh, I hope that would be useful. Um, 
question here. Where is Bigger Plate? Uh, <laughs> thank you for asking. Uh, Bigger Plate, I am here in London. This is a, you can't really tell, this is a phone booth, but I'm here in, in southwest London uh, near the river uh, in Putney. And big, so Bigger Plate operates primarily here in the UK, uh, but our community is all over the world. So we, we deliver work in UK, in the US, um, and Canada. Our community is from every country in the world. So you've got 180,000 uh, members on Bigger Plate. Um, and they are from, as I say, every country in the world. So I don't know where our audience today is joining from, but I can guarantee there'll be a mixture of countries in there. Uh, so Bigger Plate operates all over the world. Uh, we've got a global community, but our company is based here in the UK and, and here in London. Uh, but as I say, we, we work and, and engage with uh, people and organizations all over the world. So wherever you are in the world, we'll be very happy to engage with you and uh, hopefully have you as part of our part of our community. Um, so I think that looks like all of the questions for the moment. I'll just hold on for an extra minute or two. If there are any additional questions, now is your time to ask them. Uh, otherwise, I will finish the webinar in just a couple of minutes. And that looks like I've gone through in 35 minutes. So hopefully nice and brief introduction to XMind uh, as I was hoping to achieve. I'd be really interested to know, has, has this been useful uh, as an intro for, for anybody who's joining? Maybe you're familiar with mind mapping software already, but not familiar with XMind. Or maybe you're new to the whole area of mind mapping. I'm hoping I've been able to uh, very briefly show you a little bit of what XMind can do and, and maybe just get you excited and interested to, to go and uh, try it out. Um, so I can't see any new questions or comments coming in. So I think what I will do is say to you all, thank you very much for joining me today, uh, wherever you are coming from in the world. Thank you for your questions and your engagement. Please feel free to contact me, as I say, with any questions or feedback you may have. My email is still on the screen, liam at biggerplate.com. But in the meantime, I will uh, say thank you very much once again for joining me and wish you all very good luck with your mind mapping experiments.